Hello best friends, how's it going? It's Henry here. For today's video, I prepared something really special and it's a top 5 list of books that I really recommend you guys to read this fall. I've read all of these and I'm gonna leave you guys some links on the description box so you can go click and shop and get those babies to your door. And if you end up reading one of these, that would make me the happiest guy in the world. Let me know in a comment. We're gonna start with this one, and this is Naomi and Eli's No Kiss List. I read this two months ago. This was also made into a movie uh, starring Victoria Justice, and I saw the movie probably two weeks ago. And it's a good movie, but the book is infinitely better. And this is from the guys that wrote Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which I also think it's genius, and there's also a movie with Michael Cera and Kat Dennings. If you haven't seen that, check it out, it's really funny. But yeah, with this, this is a story about Naomi and Eli, two best friends who have a huge fight. And I'm not gonna tell you guys more about the fight because it would be a huge spoiler. But the thing is that they're best friends and they fall apart and the whole story is about how they find themselves without each other because they've always been Naomi and Eli, not Naomi and Eli. They're always been like one individual, but it's also pretty relatable, I think. Friendships are a tricky matter, you know? And this book taught me that sometimes love and friendship are born out of the same feeling of wanting to be with someone. You only do different things with one or the other, but essentially it's the same kind of love. This is a fun book to read because it's it feels very current, you know? It's very now. The way the characters talk to each other, the way that it's written, and it's fun that you can catch some chapters from Naomi's perspective and others from Eli's perspective, and since they live in the same building, you also get some chapters from all of their neighbors' perspectives. So that's that's kind of cool, I think. This is a light read. It, it's an easy one. I think it's something that you can read for fun. I don't think it's gonna win a Nobel Prize for Literature anytime soon, but it's a fun book. It's a nice breath of fresh air, you know? Book number two is one of my favorites from all time, and also from my favorite author, Amelina Thumb, and it's called Tokyo Fiancé. And this is the story about Amelie. It's like her own story, so that's really cool. I mean, her best works are the ones where she talks about herself, and this is one of those. If you're not familiar with her, she was born in Japan, but she's Belgian. So she went from one place to the other, and this is the book when she finally returns to Tokyo, and she starts working for a very important company, and her work life is something that she talks about in a different novel that's called Fear and Trembling, but on this one, it's all about her life in Tokyo, like not her job. And it's funny because she starts giving French lessons to a Japanese guy called Renri and they fall in love. But in true Amelie Notham spirit, it's so quirky and funny and weird. I mean, she's really something. She's so sarcastic and so cool and so weird, but it's wonderfully weird. It's kind of a funny love story, you know? It's one of her best works, I think. It's so much fun. It's You laugh and then you feel bad and then you laugh again and it's interesting and you perceive something from Japan that feels real. She she describes everything with such elegance and I mean she manages to tell more in 145 pages than a lot of writers do in 900 pages. So this is a definitely must read. It's I think my number one pick for this video, for the books that I'm talking about in this video. This is the best one and I love it. And if you're gonna read one of these, read this one. This one right here. Book number three is a classic, and I think it's important for us to read classics every now and then just because they're sources of inspiration for so many things and people, and this is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I read this three years ago, I think. I mean, I already knew all the characters and kind of like how the story goes, but I never knew the details, and that's kind of amazing because I'm sure if I tell you uh, Dorothy or the Tin Man or the Wicked Witch, you know or you have some mental image of what I'm talking about, but it's so different to read the story about Dorothy wanting to go home and this kind of like sadness about it that she's lost. I don't think it only means something for kids, you know, I think if you read it 
when you're an adult, you start to see things in a different perspective. All of a sudden, you feel like dirty and you feel like you want to go home to something. For me, that was one of the coolest characteristics about this book. So yeah, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz is wonderful and you should read it if you haven't or you should reread it now that you're an adult. Book number four is Cherie by Colette and this is a book by a French author and I saw the movie first and the movie stars Michelle Pfeiffer and I have a huge crush on Michelle Pfeiffer, she's so hot. When I saw the movie I immediately wanted to, to read the book and it's such a good adaptation because basically the book and the movie are carbon copies of each other and that's wonderful I think. It's just that the movie is prettier with images and the book is prettier with words. This is set on France, on the Belle Epoque. This was a time where prostitutes were not frowned upon. They were women that prepared boys to become men, you know? So the characters, Léa and Cherie, those are the two main characters. Uh, she's, of course, the older woman and Cherie is a boy, uh, a young man, and she is dispersed. So they kind of have a special bond. They have a really weird love story that it was strange for, for that setting, you know, for that time. But Colette had such a way with words that this is so elegant, it's written beautifully and it's, I mean, yeah, it's sophisticated and it's cool and it gives you so many references to, to French culture during that era. It's strong, it's a force of nature, you know, it's love, but it's really cool at the same time and really beautiful in its own way. So yeah, if you have the chance, see the movie, or read the book, or do both. I did both and I was pretty pleased. And the final book, and I just realized that all of the books that I talked about were adapted into movies at some point, but yeah, I, I don't know, it wasn't intentional, I promise. And this one is Never Let Me Go by Gasuo Ishiguro. It's a really weird book, it's strange, because it's about love and clones. But that sounds super lame. I saw the movie first, and it's a movie featuring, I think, Keira Knightley, Andrew Garfield, and um, Carrie Mulligan. And it was a really powerful movie, it made me cry a lot. And yeah. <laughs> but when I read the book, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a challenge. This book is hard to read because it's so. I don't know, sometimes I just. It's com The words are complicated. It's very British. At some point, I just lost myself in the pages and I was just like, no, no wait, I have to go back in and read this again and stuff like that. So that happened to me a lot while reading this book. But when I say this book is about clones, I don't want you guys to think that it's gonna be bad or it's gonna be cheesy because it's a story about kids that grow up together in, a, in the same school and they discover at some point in their lives that they're clones and that their only purpose is to become organ donors. Kind of devastating, you know, knowing that you can only live until a certain point of your life and then your, your body's gonna start failing you and you're gonna die. And that's why they have to live their life at their fullest. And It's dramatic and it's strong and it's really raw. Like the emotion over there is raw and you can feel it through the words. If you have the chance, see the movie as well. It's a really well made movie and the acting is really good. But with this one particularly, this book is so much more extensive when it comes to plot and, and telling a story. So it's way more powerful. Once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard to read. But it took me some time. Okay, you guys, that was it for today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you already read one of these, or if you are excited about one of them, or if you say, Henry, this video sucked, do something else, books are boring, tell me in a comment, please. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, the link is gonna pop up here. And also to follow me on social media, I'm everywhere. The links are gonna be available on the description box along with all the titles of the books and links to shop them at Book Depository, which is the online store where I got those with free worldwide shipping. Amazing. I'll see you guys next week with a new video. Until then, a big hug, have a good weekend, and bye!